More than 650,000 American workers are threatening to go on strike this summer or have already done so. Bloomberg calls it an avalanche of work stoppages not seen in decades. Now, many of us have been enjoying the combined actors and writer strikes in Hollywood, but now unions in trucking, automakers, and even UPS delivery drivers are threatening to strike. UPS has just a week to cut a deal, while one Bank of America analyst put 90% odds on a strike by the United Auto Workers that would hit the big three car makers, Ford, Chrysler, and GM. Indeed, the UAW president said he is, quote, going to war with Detroit. One labor historian called it the biggest moment of striking since the 1970s. What's happening here is that, like the 1970s, high inflation means many union contracts are obsolete. They were negotiated back when inflation was low. In fact, inflation is up 16% in Biden's two and a half years. So not only are they looking for catch-up, they're looking for payback for taking one for the team. In fact, this unrest is happening worldwide. France has been rocked all summer by union riots over rising costs of living and pension reform, to which they added migrant riots last month. The UK lost the most working days to strikes in 30 years, 4 million, which is about 10 to 20 times normal. The problem is that unions are pushing for payback even as companies are running into slower sales. For example, UPS delivery demand is actually falling as the economy slows and pandemic demand fades. Car makers are still working through pent-up demand from the supply chain shortage, but when that's done, they too will be staring into the abyss of a recession. It doesn't help that car makers have wasted billions on electric vehicle production that it turns out customers don't want. Put it together and both sides are back up against the wall. If unions don't demand more, their members rebel. But if companies give more, they could go under, as happened to thousands of manufacturers killed off by union demands and replaced by China. Meanwhile, of course, automation and AI are lurking on the horizon. Many jobs, after all, can be replaced by machines, but aren't because it's too expensive. But if unions push wages high enough, they will be replaced. Traditionally, this was a bigger issue in manufacturing since assembly lines are easier to automate or to send to China. But with machine learning, it's increasingly possible for a lot of service jobs as well. McDonald's, for example, has already automated order taking and some kitchen tasks. Amazon warehouses are full of autonomous robots, 100,000 and rising, scooting bins around and picking items that humans used to do. The problem is that once you go by the robots, you don't go back. For example, it used to take Amazon up to 75 minutes to fill an order manually, but with robots helping, it takes 15 minutes, while warehouses with robots can hold 50% more more stuff. The robots don't need much space. So if unions do win big concessions, it could be Pyrrhic. This time, it's not China who gets the jobs, it's the robots. Like the 1970s, this inflation is setting off a swinging pendulum, more like a swinging wrecking ball. We'll be suffering the consequences for years to come. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.